In this episode, let's show you ScreenFlow, which is a screen recording app that allows you to do screencasts for your Mac. Now there are a whole lot of different screen recording applications that are available out there. In this particular case, I've received questions about how do I record my screen recordings or screencasts. And I am on a Mac, so I use something called ScreenFlow. Now the first question a lot of you might ask if you are on a Mac and you're familiar with it, is why would you spend $99 US, which is what ScreenFlow costs, rather than just use one of the free apps that you can use. So for example, QuickTime Player is built into Mac OS. You can just pull that up and you can actually do a screen recording. You can do a webcam recording and you can even record the screen of your iOS device. I don't believe you can record all three of those at the same time, but you can record them separately and then bring them together in a, in a video editing app if you wanted to do that. That's one thing that ScreenFlow does very, very nicely. You can actually record all three of those simultaneously. And then in the editing app that comes with ScreenFlow, you can choose which one is up at which time on the screen. You can change the sizes of each of them relative to one another. You can do all sorts of really great things that is a little bit more difficult to do when you're just using a free app. One of the other challenges too is that when people play back your screencast, a lot of times people are going to play it back at a lower resolution. They're gonna watch it on a relatively small screen, either a phone or even on their computer, they may not put it full screen. And in those cases, the practical impact is that it's very difficult to see the mouse pointer. And so one thing you can do in ScreenFlow that's very, very handy is that you can actually increase the size of the pointer, not just while you're recording, actually after you're done recording. So you can fine tune it and get it just the right size that you want. You can also change the pointer. You can add effects so that when you click um, or, or even when you're moving just the mouse around, you have a big circle around the mouse pointer. You can make it so when you click, you have an animation showing that you clicked. You can also show keystrokes that you press on the keyboard. All these really great features that make it a lot easier to do any sort of tutorial when you're recording a screencast. One thing that's very nice as well, as I mentioned before, is it comes with an editor. And this editor is actually very, very nice. It's surprisingly good. It has a lot of features. Not only can you do some of those things I described already in terms of changing the mouse pointer, you can cut up the different tracks. So for example, when you do record your webcam, your screen and your an iOS device at the same time, those come in as separate tracks. And so what that means in practical terms is that you can manipulate each of them independently and you can actually get rid of them during certain parts of the overall piece if you wanna do that, bring them back at other points. A um, Lot of flexibility and this editor makes it very, very easy. In addition, the editor has features such as titling, so you can add titles. You can pan and zoom and scan around the image or the screen very easily as well. And yes, you can do that if you record, say for example, with QuickTime Player, and then bring it into an editing app like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. The difference is that it's a lot faster and easier in the ScreenFlow app because it's made to do that. So for example, to uh, zoom in and pan to a certain part of the screen, on ScreenFlow, all I have to do is click the action button and then use the zoom slider and then move the screen where I want it and I'm done. And that's a little bit more difficult to do in, for example, in Premiere Pro where you have to drop keyframes and then you have to change the size, you have to drop another keyframe, kind of animate the whole thing where you have a lot of power and a lot of control. It takes a quite a bit longer to actually get to where you want it. The editor also has a variety of different video effects. You can add different um, effects to your video clips, which are can be really helpful. For example, you can add a glow or a bloom or a variety of different things that can be helpful. You can draw boxes and highlight various things within the screen, which is again, really helpful for educational pieces. And very importantly, the editor allows you to export to a variety of formats, including from all the way at one end of the spectrum, a completely lossless ProRes format, down to the type of thing that you would probably publish to web in an MP4 file encoded with H.264. So lots of options there pretty much to meet anyone's need. One really nice feature also within ScreenFlow is that it will record not only a microphone, so you can do your voiceover, but also the computer's audio. Now, a lot of them will do that as well, but that's a question that I know was a little bit more difficult to do in previous versions of Mac OS with previous versions of different screen recording apps. It's very seamless and very easy to do within ScreenFlow 6. 
So overall, there's the answer to the question, what do I do for my screen casts? I use ScreenFlow. Now, obviously, there are a lot of other options on the PC side, one that I've used, which unfortunately is a fair bit more expensive, is Camtasia. Camtasia runs about $300 US. There also is a Mac version. I haven't used it on Mac. I have used it on PC. But I actually used that fairly recently in a job I had where I came in as sort of the... Um, the audio recording guy for a team that was recording a screencast on a PC using Camtasia, and it worked flawlessly. And in fact, has pretty much all the same features that we talked about here today. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. If you have not already subscribed, make sure you do that, and we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. One more thing, we do have a new course available for those of you that are interested in sound for film and video. Last year we released a production sound course, which means a course on how to record sound for film and video. This year we have a new course that just came out on how to post-process dialogue audio sound. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out over at school.learnlightandsound.com.